It seems to me that the overarching story of the Bible seems to be about journeys. And today we've been hearing about this journey that was short for its time, only seven miles between Jerusalem and a place called Emmaus. The passage mentions that one of the people walking on that road was a disciple named Cleopas uh, and the other is unmentioned which suggests it might actually be Luke himself but we're not sure. But whoever it was these were two broken-hearted disciples. The person they had lived for for the last three years their dear dear Jesus was dead crucified and it wasn't supposed to be like that they thought that God had sent Jesus to rescue the Jewish people from the oppression of the Roman Empire and here he is having been crucified on a cross and to make matters even more complicated that morning, this is only the Sunday morning, remember, after the Good Friday, uh, Jesus' body uh, is missing and the women come back with what seems to the men to be some tall tale of having see seen Jesus. And so they're very disheartened and very confused. Uh, I'm still feeling extremely traumatised uh, by the happenings of the past few days. Their hearts are still racing from those fight or flight hormones. They feel hollow and sick inside and they're feeling physical pain uh, because of their grief, their horror, their shock. To see him stumbling trying to carry his cross across the city. He's not even able to do it, of course, he's in such a weak state. These were scenes of utter horror uh, and the hours where he was hanging there on that crossbeam. When the stranger says to them, what things, what things have been happening? They stare at him at amazement. They can't believe that a visitor entering the city could not have heard of the recent events. Uh, and they tell their terrible story to him. The man who's walking with them says, well, didn't you know that the Christ must suffer and die? It's all in the scripture. And he takes them uh, passage by passage through the old Hebrew scriptures, what we would now call the Old Testament. And he's such a good teacher. He opens uh, these secrets to them and there's a complete turnaround as they realise that Jesus was not a failure after all. That there is hope and that indeed he did have to die to enact God's marvellous plan of redemption for God's people. When they get to their village at last, the man turns as if he's going to walk on, but it's getting dark and they say, no, uh, you've helped us so much, please come in and eat with us and, and stay with us. And so he goes into the house with them. And before they eat uh, their small meal, he takes the bread and blesses it. And it's in that action that their eyes are open and they recognise that it is Jesus, that it's been him all along. And they remember that Jesus did uh, talk lots of times about rising again. Uh, 
but they didn't understand the meaning of what he'd been talking about. And so they quickly clear up the supper things and they decide that even though it's getting dark, they're going to go straight back to Jerusalem. They must tell the others that they have seen the Lord, that Jesus is risen. They hear about another resurrection story. It strikes me that Jesus is such a good listener and he listens to them compassionately because it's so important that when you and I have been through a bad time that we get to talk about it and that we are able uh, to speak to someone who will listen properly, who will hear our pain, our heartache uh, and it's such a healing uh, process. Uh, the experts will tell us that it's extremely therapeutic uh, to be heard, to be heard properly. But God knew about this all along. We belong to a listening God, a God who hears us, a God who has the patience to listen to our cries, to our struggle, to our inner anguish and thoughts, things that we may not have shared with anyone. We belong to a God who loves us and who shows his love through listening, as Jesus clearly demonstrates. Let's finish with a prayer. Loving God, thank you for Jesus that he walks with us and talks with us. Thank you that he opens our eyes to his word in the scriptures, just as he did to those two men all those many years ago. Thank you for listening to our inmost hearts. You know all of our desires, and you are with us wherever we go, even on the most painful journeys. Dear Lord, help us to recognise your presence, to recognise your footsteps, and help us to, to be good listeners to one another, that we might be like you. Amen.